So, a while ago, I made a video analyzing Moon Valley in November, and I had made the video because I was reading through it in Japanese, and that it called me back to the book, and it had made me think a lot about the various ideas that were in it. And so since finishing that in Japanese, I've actually started Mumuntani no Fuyu, or Moon Valley Midwinter, in Japanese. And it's done kind of the same thing where it's made me think a lot about the themes of the book, and I want to talk about some of those today. One of the things that I find most interesting about the book is how it portrays winter as this alien world. You know, the Moomins are summer creatures. They wake up in the spring, they spend most of their time awake in summer, and then at the end of autumn they go to sleep and hibernate through winter. And it's interesting how Tove Jensen portrays winter as this completely unknowable world. Moomin Troll, when he wakes up and it, when he experiences all the things in it, he can't interface with winter. He can see it, he can look at it, and he can experience it, but he can't understand it. And the world never attempts to make itself understandable to him. Nothing is ever explained to him. Like the idea that there's a woman of snow who, if you look into her eyes, you'll be killed. Or that you can create a snow horse that will then take away a dead body and then reincarnate it. Or the idea of a giant Yule fire filled with these creatures who you can never really get quite a good look at and you can never really introduce yourself to. Nothing is ever explained and it's interesting to see how winter completely runs by its own rules. Moon Troll is not entitled to understand any of it, he can only observe it. And it ends up creating a very surreal, dreamlike atmosphere. Everything feels immaterial, where if you touched it, it would just disappear. And it's a very, it's interesting because it's very different to the tone of the previous books. All of the previous books in the Moomin series had been very light, very airy, and there was never a sense of gloom or somberness, or any gloom or somberness was treated with kind of a pinch of salt, you're not supposed to feel sad. Whereas Moomin Valley Midwinter intentionally feels much more somber, much more gloomy, much more dangerous. There's this undercurrent of you can't know what you're doing, you can't know what's going on, you can't protect yourself, and you can only survive in winter through the help of someone who knows it, the character being Tutiki, who guides Moon Troll through most of the book. And it's interesting, of course, to also contrast this with little Mai, who seems perfectly at home in winter, but that's also because she doesn't really run by the same morals as the Moomin family. She'll happily use her own sister as a sled to go down mountains. And because she's not hung up on, oh, there needs to be an explanation for this, she just takes things as they come, she's able to survive much more easily than Moomin Troll, who's constantly like, well, this is my house, these are my rules. And Tutiki just says, well, no, these are not your rules, this is not your house. It's your house in summer, but in winter, it's ours. Also, can we just mention real quick that the Moomins have an inflatable Hemulin? Like, I get, you know, the idea of inflatable pool toys, but in this world, Hemulins are sentient beings, like, just like anyone else. It seems a bit weird, like, oh yeah, here's my inflatable Barack Obama pool toy. Another way that the book feels more interesting than a lot of the other ones is by the inclusion of the Ancestor. And so the Ancestor is meant to be the precursor to the Moomins, but still alive. And uh, it's this warped, almost monkey-like version of a Moomin Troll. And this is also contrasted with a great moment where Moomin Troll finds an old family photo from previous generations of the Moomins, where they have like full-on monobrows and they look very severe. And I like the idea that the Moomins are its continuing family, you never really think about how did the Moomins get there, because previously it's just kind of assumed, oh, there are all these creatures in Finland, and, you know, this is the Jockster, this is the Moomin. And it's funny to think of, well, how did they evolve? How did they get from here to here? But it's still never properly explained. Why is the ancestor still alive when all the other Moomins are much more highly evolved? And it just ties into the main themes of the book where nothing is really explained and there isn't an explanation. Moomin Troll is not entitled to an explanation. Another great moment is the creature that lives under the sink. So early on you have Moomin Troll and he's just woken up, he's alone in the house, all of his family is asleep, 
and he goes to the kitchen sink, and underneath there's a pair of eyes staring back at him. And he can't really get a response from the creature, it seems a little hostile to him. Later, he's at the Yule fire, and he's trying to introduce himself to someone, but everyone is kind of flighty, not really talking to him. And Tutiki goes, hey, that's the creature from under the sink. So he goes over to the creature, and the first thing he says offends it. Like, he just says some simple pleasantries, and suddenly the creature is all distressed, nervous, and runs away. And Tutiki goes, well, you know, he speaks in his own language, and you've already offended him. And Moomin Troll is just like, oh no, but I didn't mean to, and now he's going to be hating me for a whole other year. And Tutiki comes back with the greatest line, which is just, these things happen. And what makes it even funnier is in the Japanese version, it's so you koto datte yaru mono yo, which is essentially the same thing. You know, these things happen, there are such things. But it's the tone of how it's said, the way that it's so matter of fact, that makes it hilarious. That it just feels like a stress dream. It feels like one of those dreams you have where you're like, you're going and you're taking a test and you've forgotten all the answers or you forgot you're only in your underwear but that same idea applied to this book where you have Moomin Troll desperate to introduce himself to anyone but then the only person he can start talking to is immediately offended by him and this is even called back later on when the ancestor is released and Moomin Troll's like but what if the ancestor suddenly starts saying the same words of stress that the creature under the sink was saying? It's hilarious the hang-ups that the character has and how it just feels like such a childish fear. So actually an interesting thought continuing on that uh, idea of the Japanese version is in the Japanese version, instead of just saying the sun or the moon, he or Tsuki, uh, Moomin Troll refers to the sun and everyone refers to the sun as Ohisama and the moon as Otsuki-sama. And in Japanese, that's considered to be children's language, the equivalent of saying, oh, hello, Mr. Sun, or hello, Mr. Moon. And it's interesting in that respect in the book, because Moomin Troll really does consider the sun a person. He considers the sun to be sentient, an actual character, rather than just a glowing ball in the sky. And it's the same with the moon. They have a very spiritual significance to them. And so it's interesting that you kind of get that in English, just in the general tone of how Moomin Troll talks about the sun, how he wants to punish the sun for not being there during winter. But it's interesting to see that almost more literal in the Japanese version, where he uses children's language, something that you might see in a children's picture book. You know, hello, Mr. Sun, Ohisama, or hello, Miss Moon, Otsuki-sama. 